uh, and make a little. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look at that for an idea. How's this for an idea? We make it in. Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode, we are going to be making ourselves a hovercraft. Who knew? I didn't know. You didn't know. Nobody knew. Not even the makers of this little turd knew. Responsive, is it? It wants to go on the dash. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, there we go. Right, so let's put it on the water and see what happens. Right, we're floating. We have a floater. Right, let's give it a bit of knacker. <gasps> it's doing really well. All the wind's getting hold of it. Uh, the rudder is completely ineffective. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode, we are going to be starting off the BOT series. Now, if you don't know what BOT stands for, I'll let you into a little secret. Bird or turd? <laughs> and to start this fantastic series off, I, have, I don't know even what it, I genuinely don't know what it is. Uh, and this is the bit of fun, right? So Matty's been on a bit of a bender uh, and bought a collection of um, questionable models from Pankhood. And we are going to find out if they are birds or if they're... <laughs> the, the latter so yeah literally I only ordered this one a couple of days ago I think Banggood are telling lies because uh, this was blatantly in their EU warehouse now uh, somebody's already picked up on the Facebook group with stunt technology so obviously if you stuff it and kill it uh, is that it's good that's going to be their way out um, now for absolute clarity I'll put a link to this in the video description if you use that link and go on to make a purchase you will be supporting this channel again something which I like to be 100% clear about some which I'm trying to get out in the open as early on as possible in the videos, but don't, for God's sake, don't buy this uh, until we've gone and flown it because it could be a right brown one. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> let's check that out over there. Uh, it comes complete with 100% Chinese <laughs> instructions. Uh, yeah, good job reading them. Oh, hang on, no. This is the mini ball. <laughs> no, it is completely Chinese. <laughs> uh, oh, I wonder if you could do that funny thing where you take a photograph of it and uh, Google will translate it for you. I think we might be all right. Anyway, let's get straight in here. Now, there's me. Uh, on all seriousness, okay, I have labeled this the, the bot series or part one. Uh, but all in all serious, seriousness, I am on the hunt for something that's small and fun. Let me just go and get the, take the reason for this. Uh, is because I've got the Volantex Trainstar Mini. And this thing is absolutely brilliant. But it's very expensive for what it is. It's about... I can't remember much what it was now. I'm going to say $40. It could, be, it could have been a little bit more. Uh, and it's absolutely brilliant fun. I fly it every time I possibly can at home because I can do takeoff and landings on the drive. Uh, it's stabilised and, yeah, it's really, really good fun. Like, it's surprising how well these models have come along. However, this one is a total bird. Like, 10 out of 10 for its use case scenario. It is just, oh, something just fell off it. Uh, the landing gear. It is absolutely brilliant. I, I think mine is absolutely fantastic. There's no other words for it. I did a, like a little mini review on it a while ago. Uh, and again, that one was bought out of me money as well. So I'm not going to faff with that. We'll just stick that over there for now. Uh, anyway, this was not $40. I think this was, in, like, my upper limit is maybe $25 tops uh, for one of these little things. Again, trying to. Maintain things on a budget. <laughs> it is obviously well packed. The rudder has a bit of um, angle in it, to say the least. Now, that's probably down to their terrible packaging. I have got no idea how this rudder works. Uh, there's no elevator surface. And wow, I've never, ever seen anything like this. You've got to take a look. Wow, I literally... I've never ever seen anything like that. Look at that for a servo. What the is that? 
That's not even a servo, that's like two magnets in a round brass hole. I have never come across, so I've just learned something new. I hope you have as well. I've never ever seen anything like this before. Uh, and it's got exactly the same on the other uh, wing. So there's the other wing, so that's its right wing. Uh, and then on its rudder, I'll turn this up the other way. Uh, yeah, get this on the camera when she focuses, there we go. Yeah, I've got the same thing in the rudder as well. Now the rudder is a bit bent, the box was bent as well. Now, to be fair to Banggood, they, on the plastic covering they had put a bit of perspex over the top of it uh, to try and protect it, but obviously that failed, didn't it? Uh, wingspan, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm here looking for a ruler. Oh, here we go, here we go for a ruler. It is, is, is a monster, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe I'm measuring the fucking wingspan on this thing. Right, on all seriousness, it's got an 11 inch wingspan. Uh, as far as <laughs> it's maybe, uh, we'll say it's about an eight and a half inches long. Uh, let me just put this into perspective. This is my hand, that is the model. <laughs> it is really like a bird. Uh, it's very, very small. It does come. Uh, ah, now this is where things are getting curious. Now, apparently there should have been some landing gear in here somewhere, which obviously I missed, or they missed the memo for, because there isn't any landing gear in here. Um, no, did you see it? I, I didn't see it. I don't think it's in the box, so go and check the box to be on the bright side. There is a little that hole on the bottom for landing. No, definitely no landing gear. Now, I can't remember, to be honest, if it actually said it had landing gear on the... Uh, Bang good page, but hey ho, uh, it's it's EPP foam. So let's not take the piss out of this one too much. In all seriousness, uh, molded it's molded EPP. Granted, it was a tiny mold. Uh, it's um, yeah, it's molded it black molded EPP. And it has been known, mold black molded EPP is some of the toughest stuff in that going. And if you don't know how tough mo black molded EPP is, I'm gonna cut to an insert. Now, if you've got this up loud, you need to turn it down now. So if you've got earphones in, turn it down now, because I'm going to bash this on the desk really hard, repeatedly, just to make the point that it's moulded EPP and it's ridiculously strong. So you're ready, all right? And I'm not going to hold back. Oh, I did that so hard, I broke the corner up there. That's where my grip was off. I didn't have a good enough grip on it. So let me go and grab the other one. I'm going to give that one a beat and see ready for this. That one's gone over there. It's tough stuff, okay? And the other thing is, is that, like I said, that's me when I was grabbing it on the corner using it and there was loads of stress in that corner and there's bits on the bottom. So you'd have to let it off for that. But I'm absolutely whacking it, even on the corner. See, that's me bashing it right on the edge of the table and you'll see that it cracked but it's still structurally there. Like, come on, how much abuse did that moulded EPP just get? So yeah, we can't dis moulded EPP, we can't dis this little thing uh, as time goes on. <laughs> Very peculiar. Now, uh, down here on the side, again, I'll zoom in so that you can see as well. Uh, we've got a little on-off uh, switch down here, which is not doing a lot at the moment. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, just above there, we have a little charge hole now, or a little connector hole. Now, if I just zoom back out again, uh, this hole 11 inches. <laughs> what, oh, no, we get the landing gear in the bag. It's so sporty, it was in the bag. <laughs> right, we get a USB charger. <laughs> uh, and then that plugs in up underneath. So I presume that just plugs in there. That's a nice good connection which we've got on there. We've got landing gear as well, that goes up on the bottom. Uh, and uh, I'll stick that in there like that. It's got a little tiny, anyway, let's get that unplugged. Uh, it does have a tiny little propeller on the front. We are talking uh, just over a three inch, three, in three inches and a quarter propeller. There is no spare propeller in here. Um, again, considering thinking about this aloud, uh, it's obviously a toy. There's no choice about it. Uh, the transmitter doesn't sound... Doesn't, well, it's just cheap plastic, isn't it? Push the button on the back. Ah, we need four AAs to go in the back. 
Actually, I'm gonna go and rustle some of those up. I do need to put this on charge as well for a while. Uh, by the way, in all seriousness, I will be putting this on charge quality lid. That did go in there so well. Not. Um, in all seriousness, untested product which needs to go on charge. I will put this on charge, but it will go on charge right in front of me on my desk. Okay, so I've got one of these powered USB hubs. I'm going to put it in there, I'm going to put it on charge, I'm going to let it charge for, say, half an hour or so, uh, and I'm not going to take my eyes off it because it's an untested, unqualified product, uh, which has zero trust with me right now. So uh, when I, well, on my first charge, at least, I'll just sit there and make sure it doesn't catch fire, basically. Okay, just common sense. Uh, coming back to the transmitter, we have a full knacker slider. Uh, it does feel kind of slicky smooth. You've got to give it a... Credit where credit's due, it does have a bit of a nice like, little smooth light to it. You've got right, left, and we've got two high quality LEDs on the right hand side. Uh, and uh, we got an on and off switch on the back as well. So there we go, this is the bot number one. This is the mini ball. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link to it in the video description, for, but for God's sake, don't go and buy one. Uh, at least till we go out and see if it's a bird or a turd, as the case may be. Yeah. Still needs a bit of <laughs> bending so it goes the right way. I've got no idea how these servos are work, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to go and get this ch thing charged up, and then we'll take a look at these surfaces together. Uh, and by the magic of video editing, I'll be back to you in... Well, it's day two. <laughs> and... Uh, Things are not looking good. Uh, let me bring you up to speed what's happened. is Yesterday I left it on my desk to charge for three or so hours and I thought, oh, I've left that on my desk and <laughs> went back to it. I was supposed to keep an eye on it. You know how it is. Anyway, came back to it and, right, press the little button underneath and you can see a little blinking light on the side just up here. Uh, and, uh, then it, and then the light went out and... I try and move the, you normally just push up the throttle and back down again to get these things to work and it just wasn't working, it was dead as dead as what you see and at the moment it's dead as a doornail uh, by pressing the button. Uh, so the thing is, is that when you put it on charge is, let me stick that in there, you go a little bit careful with because as you can tell I've, I've taken it apart. Right, what you may not be able to see is that just in there there is a blinking little red light, which is, you're going to have to take my word for it, it's tiny. Uh, anyway, once that's on, then you turn the transmitter on, is, I'll turn that on, brilliant, uh, is that we go up, down, he says, oh, hang on, press the on button, there we go. So we've got a blinking red light, brilliant, that's now being connected, okay, and look, the little rudder servo works. How cool is that? If we, you've got to see this. This is like the most screwed up thing. It's a little, it's a just, it's just creating a negative and positive field uh, in the in the rudder. So if I can hold that there and press the button at the same time, oh no, it's given up now. <laughs> uh, should we try that again? Right. So press the on button. Bind. There we go. Oh, you can't. You're not seeing it, are you? Uh, there you go. It's just creating an electromagnetic field. It's just running, powering up this, uh, that little circle left and right, swapping the polarity around, and hence it flicks from one side to the other side. Very, very crude. Absolutely no. You've either got left or you've either got right. That's or, or the thing is, is when you've got nothing at all, uh, is it's just left to, to wallow around. So yeah, definitely wouldn't work in a in a bigger model. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Uh, let's un unplug this. Now, the thing is, is that you may have noticed that this was in several parts a few moments ago. Uh, and the reason for that, and I say, well, why don't you come in and have a closer look? And the reason for that, I was thinking, well, it's got to be the battery. It's got to be the battery. One of it's just a dodgy wire uh, going on in there. And I was actually genuinely surprised what they managed to cram in here. So, my actual conclusion that it is a Duff battery, it does come with a 130 milliamp via 1S pack. Uh, which appears to be dead, but I'll be cutting that out and unsoldering that in just a moment. Uh, you've got the little power board on there. You've got the, the, the ailerons are connected up on the sides. The, there is wires going out there. Uh, there is a little 
what do you mean call it we got in there is a crystal we've got an antenna coming out the back uh, we got tiny wires for the change to polarity and the rudder out the back as well uh, and also in the nose a tiny little motor which is geared up uh, and that's it it's very crude um, yet not very effective because the battery is dead as a doornail so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go and get my soldering iron out and I've already contacted Banggood and say look it's broken so it made a little video blah 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 uh, so what I'm going to go and do is uh, I'm going to desolder the battery I'm going to see if I can rescue it on the big charger by trying to charge it up with as nickel metal hydride or and, and yeah, well, well Nikad's one of the two. I'll see if I can rescue it. I'm not that, I don't think it's going to go very well if I'm brutally honest. Uh, so we're going to unsolder it. I'm going to try and rescue it. If I can rescue it, I'll charge it or put it back in the circuit and see if it charges. Uh, if it doesn't, then I've got a like a pack which is like three times the size of that and we'll give that one a go uh, and see if that works and we'll at least just try and power up the board with one S and see if it works or not as the case may be so that's what I'm going to go and do right now I will be back to you by the magic of video editing uh, and I'll give you an update now and we're back okay that battery dead as a door now uh, just complete open circuit uh, it, it is just dead there's just no other words for it now uh, what I've got here in my hands is another 1S battery pack. Now, it's about the size of the model, so probably not suitable for putting in the model, but let's just quickly check. Uh, oh, we got 4 volts. Bonus. So, uh, yeah, that is, ironically, the smallest battery pack which I've got available. And I don't even have a... Well, actually, no, I could have... No, I'm not using it out of my uh, Volantich Twin Star or Train Star because that one's well cool. Uh, and this one is definitely proving to be a turd here. But let's soldier on. And I've got the biggest. Oh, it's a big ass bumblebee. Right, excuse me. Big ass bumblebee needs to get sorted out. Bumblebees are friends, you know. Uh, if it was a wasp, it gets splattered. Bumblebee. Hey, back in a moment. Well, that's the good deed of the day done. A bloody great big thing. No, I'm not doing that big. He was that big. But uh, bumblebees are very cute. Anyway, getting back onto this turd. Uh, yeah, let's soldier on. I, I don't I've don't got nothing small enough to to be able to go in here long term, but I don't know. We could stick it in there. Anyway, uh, getting on to the serious point. Let's see if we can get some smoke out of this thing. So let me make sure we get this the right way round so, and not the wrong way round. So white was... Uh, negative, that's just pushed that out, that's always a good start. Poke that in there and poke that one in there. No magic pixie smoke just yet. Things must be on the way up with this little model. Now I need to move that out of the way of the propeller. Now, like I said, it's not gone up in flames yet, so. Uh, we must be doing something right. So let's try turning it on now. Oh, I better turn the transmitter on. What a complete fumble. Right. Aha! Lights come on. Up. Uh. Ah, right, the little lights just come on. Yeah, we don't have any ailerons moving. We do have the rudder moving. Let's just... Oh. There's quite a bit of poke in that motor. The, the ailerons are definitely not working at all. Just the, the rudder. Um, there's no elevator in this model, so I presume it's all the way down to the trim on the back. Uh, it, it wouldn't take a smack in the nose more than once. And um, There's no stabilisation kicking in there at all. They're just free to move. So it does kind of work according to, it doesn't even work according to their specification because the ailerons don't work and the and the, uh, and the the rudder does, but then how are you supposed to go up and down? Yeah, it is a turd. Feel free to, is it, am I fair calling this one a turd? I think I, I, think I am, I think I'll be allowed to call this one a turd. Such a pity, it did look like it had a load of promise. Um, 
I don't know what else to suggest. That, again, that, why, would, why would they go to the lengths? And let me zoom in so you can see this. Why would they go to the lengths of uh, wiring up and putting two little of those crappy servo things in there? Oh, good magnets in those. Uh, into the wings and then for them not to work. They're just not working at all. And I, I can't see anything damaged or anything obviously broken on the board itself. Uh, so yeah, broke out of the box. Well done Banggood. <laughs> well, I'm saying Banggood is not really them, they're just a retailer isn't it? It's uh, whoever made this model but unfortunately we really can't see who made this model because it is all in 100% Chinese uh, in the manual. What a joke. <laughs> So there you go, that is the mini ball. Do not waste your money on it uh, because it's completely pointless. I can't even think of a use case scenario for a model airplane where uh, you would just have one servo in it. I, I, I'm going to keep it, I'm going to stick it in the parts bin because um, you, you just couldn't use it as a, as a model airplane in its current state. But the motor does work, but we've only got one output, which is pointless. And I haven't got a battery to go in it, so actually the whole thing's pointless. So there we go. The, the mini ball, uh, is the, the stunt model is a turd. Unfortunately, what a way to start this mini series on birds. Or turds. I tell you what, just for the chip. cheek of it, in the top right hand corner there will be a vote up there uh, and you will get to vote whether this is a bird or a turd uh, and it will be one of those typical uh, diplomatic ones. <laughs> so yeah, not a good start to the bird or turd series I'm afraid. Uh, I do have some other models on the way to me uh, which are more pro well they were they are as promising as this one unfortunately this one's just fallen flat on its face and it kicked itself in the nuts uh, <laughs> the, the, the next there for ones the fingers crossed really both fingers crossed everything crossed uh, the, the next one in the bird or turd series is not gonna be a turd so from myself, Matt, if you feel that I've given it a fair review, do me the thumbs up, do me the favor and hit the thumbs up. Uh, there's no way in Blue Monkeys that I'm putting a link to this in the video description uh, because for goodness sake, do not buy it. It is terrible. Uh, and I'm sure there are other models in boxes waiting to go out uh, and I'm sure they work. But based on my opinion, my humble opinion, and what you've seen, been and seen here today, uh, is that is this is just a complete waste of money. I, it just even the, the electronics can't really be saved because all you've got is throttle. Uh, and I think maybe if I was to make a boat out of it, maybe I could turn it upside down uh, and make a little. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha! Look at that for an idea. How is this for an idea? We make it in to a little hovercraft so we can put it on some water. I was thinking, what could you do with a with just a propeller uh, and a, a rudder? And there's the answer. The simple answer is to make a, uh, get a piece of foam board uh, and then we'll put the propeller on it is the drive and then we'll put the rudder on the back and hey ho, we can make ourselves a little um, hovercraft type boat thing. Very, very simple. It would work right on here. Hey, hey, I'm gonna have a go at that. Where's the Depron? I will be back to you in a later episode. For myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode. And I really am genuinely sorry. I just so wanted this to be a bird, but the battery is dead as a door now, so I stuck a knife in there, got her apart. Uh, and actually, I'm now gonna go on and actually cut it open up a little bit further because I do think there is ironically, some potential for a, a slightly ad hoc different project to be made from this turd. Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this episode, we are gonna be making ourselves a hovercraft. Who knew? I didn't know. You didn't know. Nobody knew. Not even the makers of this little turd knew. 
So this is the mini ball which you may have seen in a previous episode uh, where we're running a series called Bird or Turd. Now unfortunately this quite interesting being diplomatic there, maybe a little bit family friendly model turned up and unfortunately the lipo battery which was in there was dead. Also these aderons just don't work either and don't seem to be powered off the board so I was thinking to myself what could be done, what, what could we do with a little motor uh, and something which has got a little rudder on the back and I was like I can't think of an aircraft and, and then it hit me why don't we make ourselves a hovercraft. How cool is that going to be? So that's what I'm going to build here at the desk. Now rather than boring you with all the little nitty gritty stuff because to be honest I don't think this project's that repeatable because why on earth would you go and spend $23 on a turd uh, and then go and make a hovercraft out of it in the first place? Uh, like why would you do that? You might as well go and buy a hovercraft uh, in the first place. So I'm going to go and get myself a 4S battery pack, hot glue gun, draw some out on air, cut it out, wing it as I go along, and then we're gonna take it across to a pool and see if it works or not. That's the plan. <laughs> Whether that happens or not, nobody knows. Let's go and get that battery. Oh, and I'll hit fast forward as well so you can have a gibberish at me going blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean. And then we'll get to the pool and then uh, we'll take it out for a little spin and see if it works or not. Whee! solder all that what a ball bag you've got to give it a stew it's quite a pokey little motor we got going on there so I'll tell you what uh, let's take a close look at this so you can see what's going on so what I've got here if I just light this out on there and try not to short stuff out on the ruler <laughs> Uh, right, whereabouts are you? Oh, the hot glue's still on. Uh, so, what do we have here? We have the little flight control board. Get right in there, and again, it's a bit awkward to me to move the camera, so I move the bits in the right direction. So, we've got the LED, which you can just about see going flickering on over there. Uh, that, And then we've got the servo back here, uh, and I've managed to pull it out, so... There, we can see it working, complete with a bit of tape and everything. Uh, and the motor, uh, you may notice all the wires are all twisted because Matty um, did kind of set it off while he was had it in his hand. How he didn't swear, but nobody knows. Uh, but uh, it's got quite a bit of poke in there. This definitely has promise. So my goal is now to take that, and if I zoom out, I've got the Starship Enterprise here. Uh, and I'm going to mount that up on the top, I'm going to put a little rudder fin on the back uh, and that's our plan to make a little hovercraft. Now one thing which I did think about afterwards which I need to do is that I will cut a hole out and we need the centre of gravity really low uh, so I will cut a hole out for the battery at the bottom just to keep the heavy bit at the bottom uh, and then I'll just hot glue that onto the side so looking good so far we've just been and saved it from a uh, a near-death incident, <laughs> incident. Uh, and uh, we'll just keep ploughing on until we get there. Right, let's get back. Hot glue it is. Let's measure that up on there.
What I've been and done is that I've salvaged the parts which were salvageable from the mini ball look. <laughs> As in the thing with the horns and everything, not the other thing, naughty people. Right, uh, coming back to <laughs> topic, this is what I've been and built. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. Um, I'm sure some uh, inappropriate will spring to mind very shortly. Uh, so what I've been and done, I've been and mounted the motor on the top. Uh, I was trying to get it straight, but it is pulling down a bit, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, not much I could do about that at the moment. Uh, well, not much I'm willing to do at the moment. I have made this little battery bay for the battery to go up underneath, just like so. Uh, I do have reservations with whether this is big enough, because there is actually quite a bit of gravity in that now, uh, and whether water and electronics are going to mix. <laughs> But that should work. I've made the rudder a little bit bigger. It, it definitely does have a good side <laughs> and a ugly branch side. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about that wire, but uh, oh, I wonder if this solder, the, the cock glue gun's still on. Oh yeah, it is. Let me just tuck that in and around just there. One downside, you, you notice that I've got hot snot everywhere. Uh, I've been using the 4S battery uh, on this little glue gun, uh, and um, they're brilliant because they're only like three dollars or something stupid. Uh, but on 4S, uh, it, the glue does get really hot, which then means that it does take blooming ages to cool down. Anyway, so there we go. She is now ready. I don't know what I'm going to call her net, uh, yet, but uh, let's see if I tell you what. Let's see if she works. So what was it? Red was live, wasn't it? Red was positive. Uh, a bit worried about the wires, but hey ho, it will be fine. Uh, make sure safety first. Turn the transmitter on. Let's zoom out and see what's going on. And by the way, I've done all this while I've been. Uh, my cup of coffee hasn't gone too cold. So uh, happy days so far. I'll quickly plug that in there. Now, oh, you plonker. Uh, I need to press the power button, which is on down there. Right, I've got red LED. Red LED. Right, power up, power down. Oh, not as responsive as it was. Well, hey, whoa, this is going to be brilliant. It wants to go on the desk. <laughs> whoa, that's what I was worried about. Uh, the angle on the dangle is a bit too far downwards. Uh, that is going to make it plow into the water. So I tell you what, I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put that back on again, uh, and let me just get that disconnected. I am just going to go and sort out that motor angle because that's blatantly not going to be right for in the water. Uh, and then we're going to take it down to the pool and see if it works or not. So for myself, Matt, let's go. Howdy, it's Matt. Now we're out at the the kids' pool, and we've got the pilot here. Uh, or should I, what, what do you call him? Sailor. There we go. Make sure we, oh, he's going to get hit in the head there, isn't he? All right, we're going to have to go sailorless to begin with for this. Now, give you a quick heads up. The audio is going to be a bit 50-50. I can't find me dead cat to go on the microphone. So some parts are going to be really loud. Some parts are going to be a little bit windy and some parts are going to be a little bit quiet. I do apologize about that. Can't find it anywhere. Anyway, coming back onto topic. Uh, we've got Mick Bubbles, which is the name which I've decided to go with for this uh, corking little adventurer. Uh, and we're going to give it a punt and see if it floats or sinks. <laughs> Absolutely crazy little thing. Right. Let's press the button there. All right, up. That's not bound, he said. Oh, there we go. Right, so let's put it on the water and see what happens. Right, we're floating. We have a floater. Right, let's give it a bit of knacker. <gasps> it's doing really well. All oh, the wind's getting hold of it. Uh, the rudder is completely ineffective. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Every time I power up, the nose is definitely, oh, we've got water ingress. Uh, and now it's stopped with, oh, oh, shit. We uh, kind of capsized a bit. Don't think it was the best design ever uh, of a boat, uh, but it's still going. It's lost control now. Oh, 
yeah, we do seem to have some radio blackouts from time to time. No, I think it's died now. Oh, here we go. We're good. Not uh Yeah, radio controller is not that great. We're, at the moment, we're just, uh, we're dead at sea almost. Yeah, we get so far and we've lost range. See, I'm twiddling me. Oh, oh, shit. How am I supposed to get that out? Not very responsive, if I'm honest. Also, not the most stable platform. Let's get ourselves back to the desk. Oh, oh, oh no, we're right. No, terrible. Let's get ourselves back to the desk. Who knew we would end up at the desk with uh, a turd in one hand and a boat in the other one? We really did make ourselves a floater. We should be proud in what we've managed to achieve together. Now, on a serious point, this is an utter waste of, I think it was $23. And as we saw, the electronics didn't even work. The battery was dead. The ailerons were wired up underneath. They just didn't work at all. And then when we put it into the electronicals into a boat, which was less foam and stuff around it, uh, is that it would cut out within uh, a few feet from ourselves with a uh, decently charged uh, to one S battery pack. So, yeah, the model is absolute junk. For God's sake, do not waste twenty three dollars on it. There is probably many other parts which you can make a cool little uh, hover boat, which is way better than this turd uh, and that turd. Uh, with cheaper or with better components which you've probably even got in your parts bin. Uh, but this does kind of highlight the series really. Bird or turd, you know, so we've been and hit ourselves a turd. Now don't think for one moment that you should feel disheartened uh, and that we might not run into a cheap bird. I, my fingers are crossed. There are a collection of models on the way to me right now uh, which I feel have potential to be birds. I did have high hopes for that one. I just didn't realize that the mini ball was gonna be so terrible. Uh, and actually, I wanna, I wanna say like a big thumbs up to Banggood here. And as many of you know that I buy all models out of my own money for my own abuses. And as you've seen, we've definitely abused that one. Uh, and I put a really not very good review, a one star review, and I posted it on the Sunday, and we're, I'm recording this now on the Tuesday, uh, and they've published the one star review. It's basically just decimated that product because anybody who reads it is just not gonna buy it, I've got any common sense. Uh, it's just not gonna buy the product. Uh, so like, as always, there's a, there's a hat tip needed where a hat tip is needed. So fair plays to bang good for, uh, uh, what do we call it, posting a bad review, and it was only literally one star, I'll put a little, a little insert in the bottom corner, uh, and uh, I'm yet to have my money back from Banggood, because obviously it's a failed product, although we, we did manage to make a video out of it in the end, uh, and I had no idea we'd end up where we are. 
Anyway, it's time for me to go. I can't say anything more than really just saying thank you to you for taking the time to watch this episode. Uh, if you have any questions about this mini ball, uh, or turd, as it's now going to be known as, uh, please just ask down in the comments section underneath this video on YouTube. Uh, and, yeah, watch out for more parts of the bird or turd <laughs> series. Uh, because, like I said, there is a couple on the way to me, and some of them look really promising. And I don't think they're going to be as bad as this one. I don't make any promises I'll make a boat. In fact, I don't want to make a boat again, because I obviously didn't work out. I'm obviously not a very good boat builder because it wanted to sink every five minutes or every five seconds. But uh, hey-ho, all good fun. Time for me to go. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you again shortly. For myself, Matt, cheerios. <laughs> oh yeah, and did I miss a pun about the uh, little uh, pilot being a seaman uh, at the uh, pond? I think I might have done. Won't make that mistake again, will I? Anyway, I'm off. Cheerios. <laughs>